10 views of the Oscars live, Monday only on San Diego's 10. Tonight on Politically Incorrect, from Crisis Center, Kelly Martin. Writer, John Gregory Dunn. Rock and roller, Mojo Nixon. And comedian, Taylor Negron. And now, the star of Politically Incorrect, Bill Maher. Thank you very much, folks. Oh, please, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I know why you're happy, because everyone in the administration is out of the country, and... <laughs> it's true. Clinton was with Yeltsin in uh, Finland, and Gore's getting ready to go to China. Hillary, you know where she is? She's been in Africa all week. She was in South Africa yesterday, and the native women gave her a traditional African pot, figuring she needed help in the kitchen. <laughs> no, because they heard about her whitewater days when she actually tried to cook the books. You know, it's... <laughs> and, uh... Also, big news overseas, if you were following the story that went on in Israel the last couple of weeks, now Israel has been uh, aiming to build this big settlement in Jerusalem. Very controversial, and yesterday, they actually started to do it. They broke the ground and started to do it, and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said he has never been through such tough negotiations. And that was just with the contractors, not, <laughs> not the Arabs. The, the Jewish country. Well, uh... If anyone lives in a very rural area, good news, you are finally getting some of the modern telecommunications. You know, a lot of places in this country don't have cable and a lot of the stuff that we have. And MCI, the MCI company, said they're going to build big city telecommunications. There was one mix-up. Uh, one guy in one of these towns uh, heard about MCI's uh, friends and family and thought it was a dating service. It's... <laughs> Well, uh, here's an interesting story. Uh, in California here, a high school uh, class was doing their science experiments, and they threw one kid out because, now I'm a big animal rights guy, but I don't know, this may be going too far, because they said the experiment was cruel to fruit flies. <laughs> I know, I mean, so, so they, they stopped the experiment, and they took the flies out, and the flies have been released and given a good home uh, circling around David Crosby. So, not to worry. Um, and finally, are there any users of cellular phones here? Because people are concerned. <laughs> I, I knew it was a sophisticated group. Um, you know, people are concerned about the privacy, you know, like Newt Gingrich, what happened to him. So, a couple of months ago, they set out to make these things a lot better so that you couldn't break in. Well, put a new code. Yesterday, a team of computer experts announced that they had already cracked the electronic code. And sadly, none of them knew how still to unhook a bra. It's just... <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. It's all been satirized and real our panel. First, he's a playwright, actor, and comic who's actually playing movie is Angels in the Outfield, too. Taylor Negron. Oh, and he's a friend of mine. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. He is the king of the rock and roll nut jobs in his new CD, Skadzook, the homemade bootleg. Mojo Nixon. Mojo, thank you. She is the star of Crisis Center in the upcoming TV movie, Blue Heaven, Kelly Martin. Hi, young lady. Thank you for coming. Hi, he is a screenwriter and novelist. His current bestseller is Monster Living Off the Big Screen, John Gregory Dunn. Hi. Mr. Dunn, thank you so much. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody, and uh, it, it, today is the first day of spring. I'm sure you're aware of that. Do you know what else today is? It's meat out. Ah, uh, yes. You know that? Yeah. Yes. Are, are you aware of that, audience, that this is... I didn't know about this. A lot of people don't apparently know that there is a meat out. 
In fact, there are several uh, confused men who are arrested for indecent exposure today. <laughs> misinterpreted the whole who's thing. Who's behind Meat Out? Uh, who's behind? Is it like the? It's, uh, well, what is it? It's uh, it's when, it's like smoke out when you can't smoke. This is the day when the folks who don't want any meat to be eaten, vegetarians, are saying, yeah. Um, well, why are they bothering us? There's one vegetarian in the audience. Why can't they just not eat meat? Why they got to bother us? Well, because meat is bad. <laughs> meat is good. <laughs> And that's the kind of sophisticated thing we have on the show. I mean, no, no, for lunch. What's that? I had a hamburger for, for lunch. Yeah. Is, is that a bad thing? You know well, what? It takes 100 pounds of grain to make one hamburger. There you go. I mean, that's the bad thing about meat. Yes. But it's also very, very... I like brains. You like brains? You like sweet bread? I like, sweet, I like lamb's balls. I mean, I... I, I mean, I, I, I like exotic Where meat. are you but from? I'm from, I'm from France and Glendale. <laughs> but, but, Glendale is every but time. I don't know if brains and testicles are meat. <laughs> They're not. That's what we can, I can no, get around fun. this. Oh. But listen to this. So, <laughs> so meat out the brains. The, 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 the McDonald's Corporation uh, so, so currently provides, I, this is amazing, 7% every day of America's meals and over 60% of our crappy plastic toys. <laughs> I mean, I isn't that, that amazing? And their goal, now this is a stated goal. They want to, someday they say they, their goal is to have a McDonald's franchise within four minutes of every man, woman, and child. Isn't that a little disturbing. scary, disturbing, completely disturbing, creepy, and evil? Yeah, because well, if you want McDonald's, you can go 10 minutes to get McDonald's. You don't have to walk <laughs> out your door and like have McDonald's smack in front of you. <laughs> What's also really scary <laughs> is, today. well, they're, they're going to bring back the hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think the hamburger is frightening. I like the hamburger. So, uh, they have a McDonald's in Shanghai, in this huge, yes. elaborate uh, building, which used to be a private club, mm -hmm. and it's about the size of St. Louis. And it's this, it's this, it, you, you, you go in, and we just wrote a movie which has the penultimate scene is in the Shanghai McDonald's. True, true story. True story. They're, they're the Big Mac's called Number 17. <laughs> like, there's actually fine. something <laughs> like there's like something on the Chinese of... menu. They... I know I'm I'm bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know McDonald's is putting some in their food to make us weak, sterile, and subservient. You probably didn't notice, did you? <laughs> That's why they're trying to get everything. They're trying to get us four minutes. Wait, haven't you seen that thing on Dark Skies? They're trying to use our brain. They're trying to take us over. <laughs> Wait, I'm not making this up. No, you believe in us. Wow. Well then. Then why are you so pro meat if you believe that? I don't eat at McDonald's. I, I I sure ain't gonna eat no McRib. What's up with them fake bones? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, now I, I eat meat myself on an occasion, probably more than an occasion. But you know, meat was originally for feast days. Mm -hmm. You know, and occasionally I think it is okay. But we pig out on it, eat it all the time. We pig out on everything. We're Americans. Yes. We we are blobs. If you, and if you go out and you see, let's show what happens to a human buttocks when you have. A, a hamburger every day of your life. Well, this is not a good thing. What does happen to it? 56 inch waist. What's that? 56 inch waist. A 56 yes. inch waist, and oh, look at toilets are getting bigger. Did you hear that? Oh, I know. Oh, that's good news for me. <laughs> they've actually, they've actually had to enlarge toilets. They've are gone, you kidding? I and I have something else I'll tell you later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what could be worse than that? That you have to wait for. Fair Fawcett's birthday. Pay per view. Nude. Farrah Fawcett's going to be nude on pay-per-view? Yeah, for her 50th birthday. Eating meat? <laughs> Eating meat. <laughs> Not today. No, but uh, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. We're, we're mixing our, our metaphors. Um, no, you know what? It's, it's bad. I mean, you know what? I've always treated meat like champagne. Yes. On a, on there a special, you go. On a special occasion. Exactly. A nice little piece of prime rib. Right. A nice, some brains. <laughs> and that's that. But I mean, you know, we're, in, we're the most indulgent people, and it really is quite a shame. You know, what's wrong with an English muffin for dinner? Right. And now a word. I have no problem with that. <laughs> Jack Steakhouse. We have to <laughs> Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, brought to you by Victoria's Secret Angels. Victoria's Secret introduces angels. We're not those kind of angels. I try to be an angel. Well, if she's an angel, then I'm Don't a... say it, Karen. 
angels, our sheerest, shiniest, most colorful bras and panties ever. I told you never to call me here. <laughs> this is my cloud. Says who? <laughs> Good angels go to heaven. Victoria's Secret angels go everywhere. Angels only at Victoria's Secret. Lady? Sure am. Right now, we're getting ready for the biggest brake sale in our history. The Midas No-Nonsense Brake Sale. Come in now for a thorough brake inspection, and with any regularly priced brake service over $100, you get a $40 rebate. That's right, a $40 rebate. So, stop by your Midas store today. That is, if you can. The $40 rebate ends March 30th. Hey, you're a guy, and guys want to stay cool. How do you do it? With new Speed Stick Gel. No other gel keeps you drier, so you always feel your coolest. New Speed Stick Gel, just for the guys. The Birdcage is the falling down funniest comedy you'll see this year. Ooh, perfect. Hysterical. Hey. Ah. I laugh till it hurts. It's just what Rush Limbaugh said. The Birdcage. Own it today. My little girl is gone. Two desperate outlaws have kidnapped her daughter. We are keeping this kid. And she must find her before it's too late. Late. It's a Hedman Black in a world television premiere. Out of nowhere, ABC Sunday. You are witnessing, in its entirety, the Volkswagen sales pitch. <laughs> You want to take it for a spin? During our national test drive event, you can lease a Jetta GL for just $169 a month on a two-year no-hassle lease, which means for the next two years, all you have to do is put in the gas. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. <laughs> Tired of heavy meals? <laughs> Try Subway. Fresh baked bread, fresh meats, fresh veggies, and plenty of regular six inch subs with just six grams of fat or less. Subway, big on taste, not on fat. If you're planning to be in the Los Angeles area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 213-852-2655. Okay, we're back and uh... I want to talk about books because you are a great author and I appreciate you coming here <laughs> and, and slumming with us. Uh, so I wanted to ask about uh, books because every once in a while you hear someone say books are dying, literature is over, people don't read anymore, and you never hear anybody say, so what? And that's the question I wanted to put tonight, so what? Because I was struck by the fact that Schindler's List, when it was on television, reached 65 million people. And of all the books that have ever been written about the Holocaust, I've probably never been read by more than a million or two people. And the fact that literature is, seemed to be eroding in our culture, is it something to be mourned if it's replaced by another medium that reaches people? I think not. No. Really? Yeah. I think, I, I think not. You take somebody like Bill Gates, say, who, uh, who is basically destroying the word, and you, every, everyone's going to be a, uh, a, a computer head. Um, I don't... You can, if you get your information that, that way, I'm not, I'm not altogether sure that that's a bad thing. Right. Uh, I wish they'd buy my books, but it was. Uh, uh, it's, it's, but it, I think that information is the important thing, not not how to get it. Right. If if it comes through the screen, I mean, screen. words are just to paint pictures. Well, it's what you do with the information. Is the information you no? Know, you, you know, how are you using? It? Do you understand it? You know, if it's just flying by, and all you're getting is news at eleven, you know, not doing well, a whole lot. No. I'm, I'm a little disturbed by it. I'm in college right now, and we have to, like, email our papers now. Where do you go to college? I go to Yale. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> and my professor has us email our papers, and I email them ten times because I'm so scared that I'll spend all this time on a paper, and it'll never get to them. You mean you don't have to actually turn in a paper no, anymore? No, email now, and it's Isn't disturbing. I'm, you don't have email. What? You have to get it. You, you have, have to, to get, get email it. if you don't have it, and I still don't know how to work. Well, what about work? actual reading? Do the kids... Well, I mean, where I go, yeah, yeah. I and mean, reading think, is not being replaced. Do you think replaced, we but... would be at a loss if we if we only had the Moby to Moby Dick and not the Absolutely. book? Absolutely. Are you kidding? Because it's destroying. Like you've got to nurture imaginations. 
And I think that's scary that it's not being... Yeah, but how many people have actually read Moby Dick? As a poet? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because you had to. But you thought it was about something else. I thought it was... Else. <laughs> now... Uh, I thought... <laughs> I thought, I thought Jackie Collins wrote it, so it was very much of a letdown. But, but I think that's what's so bad in, uh, when you have this, uh, these verbal skills that are diminishing. There's a lack of orality, you know, because uh, when we read, we are able to have a point of view. And a lot of people are soulless because they can't articulate what's going on in their head. That's true. And if you don't know, if you haven't read and your brain isn't filled, you are not able to even engage in what's going on around you. You can't interpret the past and there's no future to be created. I mean, when you can read, like I read, I've read your books, you're the most amazing writer because you in, envision a world. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's one of the problems where we have these soulless gangsters but, and these crazy people. They're not, there's no future without orality, which is rooted in literacy. But you say envision a world. If you can depict the world, isn't that cutting out the middleman? Aren't words just to paint a picture? And if we have the technology now to actually show the picture, why go through the middleman? I think that... I can't believe you just said that. They're the middleman. The middleman is the soul. These these the are signs that are that you know they ignite the soul. That like the, the invisible tidings of things. You know, the the, the uh, those are the authentic things of the invisible things. And words. You know, when you when you're reading a book, you're reading literally between the lines. You know, because those things are, sure. are igniting those things in your but mind. But then maybe you're getting it wrong. If you, do, if you do, you just put down the book and go on. Well, I, I mean, I think you used Schindler's List as an example, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had the movie if we hadn't had the book. So, I mean, that, in a lot of cases. But that just means that the book was a good screenplay. I mean, you, your books, I mean, let's be honest, like a lot of authors, they're not really writing books anymore. They're writing an outline for a screenplay. I mean, you can't tell me that John he Grisham... He doesn't. But, but John Grisham and these guys, when they write a book, please... They're writing a, a launch pilot. pilot. They're writing a pilot for a ride. What do you think Raymond Chandler? What do you think Raymond Chandler was doing? I have to take a break. We're long on time in this medium. If you want more computer for your money, you got to call us, the friendly folks at Gateway 2000. Can we back up? Pick up the phone and give us a call. Call now. Call now. Call now. Kind of nervous. Call now. Grab the phone. Give us a call. Pick up the. Dial, dial, dial. <laughs> dial. Right now. Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. To find out more, call 1 800 Gateway. Call us today. Introducing the new Jeep Cherokee. While it still has one of the most powerful engines in its class, the all new interior will impress you. And while its off-road capability is legendary, you'll find a quieter ride. Now, with refinements like these, will you still recognize it? We think so. The new Jeep Cherokee, with over 40 advancements. Just more fun than others. Carnival. Only a drama this powerful could bring Hollywood's biggest names together. ABC April. Gun. Take I-5 or 805 to the Mile of Cars in National City. Over 5,000 vehicles to choose from. Mossy Nissan's Moonlight Madness Sale is on now with new Sentra GXEs only $11,995. That's $4,000 below the factory's suggested price. With air, power package, stereo cassette, and automatic during Mossy Nissan's Moonlight Madness Sale. Everybody's coming to the Mile. Get on down to the Mile of Cars in National City and get into a Mossy Nissan today. They come from beneath the earth, the silent destroyers, termites. Only he can stop them, the exterminator. He's back and dressed to kill. Wait till they get a load of me. Armed with four termite barriers featuring Orkin foam. More termite stopping power than conventional treatments alone. So the enemy's terminated. 
Guaranteed. You're the best. Four barriers. Get them by calling 1-800-800-ORCAN, day or night. They won't be back. If you're gonna eat a big, juicy Carl's Jr. Superstar all by yourself, make sure you're all by yourself. If it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. Um, this, uh, we started talking about uh, red meat, but my red-blooded American boil is up here because I've, I've read this story in a couple of different publications, and I guess folks out there have too, about the harems that are going on in the, in the Middle Eastern world and the Sultan of Brunei. Miss USA is suing the Sultan of Brunei because she was basically sold into the harem over there, and I, this is a matter of national pride. <laughs> Did she get paid? She, well, she says, see, there's two... There's but a, it was a meatless harem. <laughs> <laughs> so it was okay. There's an article, and they read lots of books. <laughs> there's an article in this one's Cosmo about a, a woman who went to a, a Middle Eastern harem. She had a very good time. She said she was there for nine months. She made 800 grand. Not bad. Can you believe this is going on in 1990? $3,000 a day. I mean, but it's been going on since, you know, thousands of years since... You know, ancient know, times. So was slavery, but we stopped it. We're modern. Well, what is wrong with a nice harem? You know, you, you know, fountains, tile. It's very nice. <laughs> They're getting paid. They get well, paid. They're getting paid to be to be naked and have sex. Two of the most you know basic things. We are all products of being and you know naked what? and having sex. I know a I, lot. A lot of my friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very very profound, Mojo. Yes. A lot of my friends in Beverly Hills are in harems of one. We'll be right back. Yeah. What's that number? I don't know what that is. But this Miss USA, her name is Sh uh, Shannon Marketic. She was Miss USA 1992. And uh, she thought that she was, <laughs> that's what she says, that she was being paid $21,000 a week to do promotional work. What oh, kind of promotional on. work does she specify? And, and she gets over there, and, and the, the guy from the, the harem says, what do you think you're here for? A legitimate question, don't you think? Well, the harem you guy... You think she's an idiot? The harem guy, the, har the guy who's running the harem, sounds very much like, uh, like the Zero Mostel part in The Funny Thing Happened on the, the Way to the Forum. I mean, she's, he's the pimp, I guess you'd call it. Yes. And, uh, uh, and he thought that she was there as a, as a thing of free enterprise. It was, but isn't it funny? Paula Jones was on 60 Minutes saying, "I went up to Clinton hotel room. I didn't know. What, I thought he wanted to talk to me." <laughs> and, and, the, the, Mike, the girl with Mike Tyson. Girls really think guys want to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> this. You're letting the truth out of the bag here. You gotta stop right now. I just <laughs> learned something. I can't. I mean, this is such a puritanical country. What is wrong with having a group of people you have sex with? I mean, it's it's like th th this has been going on forever, and it happens. We have mistresses. Everybody goes around and screws around. Look at the internet. Look at that. I mean, all those weird chat rooms. You know, um, you know, emotional arms dealer seeks ten beautiful blondes. You know? <laughs> Oh, I'll go in that chat room. Yeah. You know, the next thing you know, you're like, you know, on, on KLM headed for the, you know, Africa. But I, I, do, do you agree with me that, that uh, men don't get it about that? That, that w we think that women are naive. They said that the Mike Tyson girl was naive. She should have known. Sure. He wanted, he was going up to, to her hotel room. She should have known. Paula Jones should have known. And, you know, women, we all Their know. Their mothers everything. didn't teach them correctly, I suppose. Yeah. I go to Yale, so it's kind of different. The women aren't like women there. They're, they're like women. So I haven't really have been... Have you ever gone to a ho somebody's hotel room and they say, come up, Kelly, let's have a, like a, some... I can't talk pie. about that right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if the governor of a small southern state... <laughs> <laughs> ...asked you to his hotel room in the middle of the day and you'd never met the men, what would you think? I would probably think it was a little shady. Yeah. I probably wouldn't. But my mother told me not to do that, so... Go up. I think women go to hotel rooms because they know the maid's just going to come in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you're in a hotel room and the maid's just come in, you're like, hello. <laughs> and they always 
going on in there? When you walk in, you're like going, you know, hello. I'm, I'm, I'm entertaining. I'm seducing. I'm, 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 you're, you're, I'm being evil. You're harrowing him. Harrowing him. So you don't yeah, think there's anything wrong with this? I think, if, I think if anybody should have a harem, it should be us, and we should be getting women from all over the world to come here. I think it's a point of national pride. Okay. <laughs> well, isn't this the guy the richest guy in the world? What's that? Isn't this guy the richest guy in the world? Those well, sultans. the Sultan of Brunei is. The one in Cosmo is not, but he apparently... Now, how much money was she getting, the one in... Um... Same thing, $3,000 a day, which, by the way, was the exact sum that she got in Pretty Woman. I think they saw the movie. <laughs> it's like the quote now. That's right. like one-tenth of what Jennifer Aniston gets. Oh, <gasps> she's a whore? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have to take a break. We'll be right back. Boston Market introduces the extra chicken for a dollar deal. You just buy any family meal, which includes your choice of entree, like their tender, juicy ham, rotisserie chicken, turkey, or meatloaf, plus a choice of sides, like real mashed potatoes or macaroni and cheese, plus cornbread, starting at $12.99, and get a whole extra chicken for a buck. For a limited time, buy a Boston Market family meal and get a whole extra chicken for only a buck. But hurry, they're going fast. Don't mess with dinner. A toothpaste that really whitens without bleach or harsh abrasives, it's Aquafresh Whitening with a patented triclean formula that's tough on stains yet gentle on your teeth. Not better than my Rembrandt. Even Rembrandt can't beat Aquafresh Whitening for dazzling whiter teeth. Introducing the Midas No-Nonsense Brake Sale, the biggest brake sale in our history. With any regularly priced brake service over $100, you get a $40 rebate. But hurry in. The $40 rebate ends March 30th. Friday, they broke tradition. Women at the Citadel, but some quit in disgust. For the first time, this former cadet tells what it's really like. A 2020 exclusive. Plus, think you can drive and talk on the car phone? Millions do it. Wait till you see just how lethal it can be. 2020 ABC, Friday. That's the big story over at the Charger camp. We'd like to know what you think of this big change. Dial into 10 News, part of Digital City. Access America Online, keyword San Diego. San Diego's 10 and Digital City. Local, interactive information every day. Nobody knows me like me. My body's a temple. I should be the guru. Lived in this body my whole life. That makes me the landlord. Now there's an HMO that understands. With Access Plus HMO from Blue Shield of California, you can see your primary care physician first or go straight to a participating specialist in your medical group. My body's a roadmap, and I am the guide. Access, one of many new things behind the shield. Blue Shield. Nobody knows me like me. San Diego, are you ready? Buick LeSabre, the car you made the best-selling full-size automobile five straight years and counting, is returning the favor. For a very limited time, buy a new LeSabre, Buick will give you free gas for a year. Or lease a comfortable six-passenger, beautifully equipped LeSabre for $2.99 a month and get a year's worth of free gas. Get your best deal on an American bestseller at your San Diego Buick dealer. The 10 Leadership Award from 10 News, honoring San Diegans who put children first. Every day in our community, someone is reaching out to our children, educating, inspiring, making a difference in their lives. If you know someone who puts children first, let us know here at 10 News. All right, tomorrow we're going to have P.J. O'Rourke, Dweezil Zappa, Neil Long, and Representative uh, Jim Lee. We only have about a minute. Mojo, you said something interesting to break about books. Tell us what you were telling about what you said about... I believe that, uh, you know, the number of people reading books, writing books, buying books, the percent of the population, 10%, 12%, is the same. It's been all along. It's not, you know, we just have higher expectations now. We think, oh, everybody's getting dumber. People have been dumb a long time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Do you think that's true? You think that, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, I do think Oscar it's true. Oscar Wilde's day? It looks yeah, like everybody was reading, but you're probably right. But they weren't. But, but, the, but, the, but the degree of uh, people who couldn't read, I mean, who couldn't sign, sign their name, they right. were illiterates. I mean, it's, you don't find that now, or, or it's very rare. Um, I, I think I, I think you're right, Mike. That it, it is, yeah. and, <laughs> and bookstores nowadays, you know, are anything but bookstores. 
You know, they sell everything. They but sell if he asks for a book, the manager cards. comes over and says, is there something wrong? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's... You're watching ABC. San Diego Roofing has made roofing affordable. I'll roof most any home for $99 a month. San Diego Roofing has a wide choice of durable and attractive roofs. Some guaranteed to